time is your superpower yeah. because the longer that you have the less you actually need to create real wealth but me what i would like to see is you look at saving as a nanny so that you save fast then you spend what is left so um quickly just to summarize what was discussed during the, the first round table we had a very amazing conversation and we went through first of all we looked at some st statistics that bring this issue give the, the weight uh, around this issue uh, that we're discussing today and we looked at numbers that you know got us thinking about what do we collectively come together as industry players educators to advance financial education as much and as as much as possible as far as possible to reach as many as possible um, we went through a conversation around what does say a, a, a parent with a child under 10 years do to prepare the child to have that mindset that gets them to understand money and how money works we went through the teen years 20s 30s all through to retirement touching briefly on uh, both the soft competencies and the, the, the skills, the money skills that they needed to, to learn. So what we'd like to do today is to bring out more of this conversation, again, looking through these uh, different uh, seasons of our lives and having a conversation around how do we get started earning. We, we had an appreciation that uh, most of uh, Africa and Kenya uh, um, as well is around 20, 21, 22 years of age. Our demographics show us that. How does a young person get into the earning journey? The how part, we start breaking them, uh, breaking that down, and also understanding what will they uh, interact with. Debt, um, incomes, what kinds of incomes, how do we make that practical for this young person? So uh, we can have that conversation as we progress it. Okay, maybe I, maybe I would start and I'll give my journey. Uh, as I grew as one of the young people in my family, we, uh, my parents opened for us a passbook in the post office. Mm -hmm. So little money that we used to get, we'd put in that passbook. Mm -hmm. So as we grew up, we knew we had a, pass, a savings. Mm -hmm. So this saving passbook with poster was there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as uh, we grew up, now you are able to, the passbook could be passed over to you to take control. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's where it collapsed. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as a teenager, now the demand for cash increased. Mm -hmm. And I uh, started using my passbook money mm -hmm. instead of saving. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it sort of broke up the system. However, in my knowledge, I knew I had to save. Mm -hmm. But what I found interesting is that uh, the the girls who are saving with them, they kept their savings. But we used our savings to entertain them. <laughs> <laughs> but then they kept their savings. Yeah. And that the culture, I think, is still on. They did yeah. save more than the men mm. because of the demands. Yeah. But um, as a person who was running a retirement benefit, so looking at this retirement field, uh, and that's why I'm, I, I, I started the school of first pension, school of pensions and uh, retirement studies in this country. Yeah. So I uh, basically take people through that journey. Mm -hmm. But uh, the journey of saving, because the, 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 if you look at our savings as Kenyan, it's very low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one thing, very, very low. It's not enough even for somebody who has retired. But it's a question of changing our mindset. Mm -hmm. Our mindset has been that when you get your money, you spend, what is left is what you save mm. but me what i would like to see is you look at saving as a nanny yeah. so that you save first mm. then you spend what is left mm. if you start that way you you change your mindset because mm. our mindset is spend mm. then save mm. but me i'm saying let's look at saving us and earning mm. so you save fast however little mm. that you have if you say okay my, my earning is so much the 10 percent let it go to saving mm -hmm. that we don't touch then what is left is what you spend mm -hmm. that way you sort of manage your expenditure mm -hmm. because it means this is what i have and this is what i'm going to use but the other way you know you spend fast 
and if you are lucky enough to have something like what you save. But if you look at saving as an earning, then you will save first, then earnings. So then what is left is what you spend. That way you are able to manage your expenditure. Absolutely. Because that's like now what you have to spend. Yeah. And then you can now build it up. You'll see as your income increases, mm. then if it was 10%, now you can push it to 15. Mm. Yes. It's like that, like that. If you look at uh, the merry-go-rounds, I was talking to a lady the other day, them, they are at a different class. There are about six, 10 of them, but they're ex executives. So they have this merry-go-round of 60,000 a month. So it means that for 60,000 a month, and they give one person, mm -hmm. they're 10. That's 600,000. Yeah. What can you do with that 600,000? It's good money. Yeah. But it works for them. Yeah. Yes. So it doesn't have to be 60. Mm -hmm. It can even be 10. Mm -hmm. 10 and everybody. So it means that uh, you can buy something meaningful mm -hmm. because of that money go down. Mm -hmm. So um, first thing is change our mindset. Look at saving us and earning. Yeah. yeah, I think when I think back to my 20s um, and, you know, late teens, 20s, the focus was I just need independence from these people who are cramping my style, my parents. Yeah? <laughs> so you're always thinking, how can I earn something mm -hmm. so that I can get out of home and do my own thing? Um, but saving is the last thing on my mind at that age or was the last thing on my mind at that age. And it's, you know, even when you see young people today, it's, you know, you only live once. And somehow you think, when I get to my late 20s and early 30s and 40s, I'll earn more. Right now I'm earning so little. So even if I save it so little, mm. what's the point? And so that's generally the attitude at that time. But when you look at the reality of time and the power, in fact, I usually say that time is your superpower. Yeah. Because the longer that you have, the less you actually need to create real wealth. Mm -hmm. And I read, I remember seeing somewhere that wealth creation and wealth itself is actually a function of income of whatever amount, mm -hmm. time and discipline. Yeah. And, and honestly, if somebody has, even if they only have access to 2000 every month mm -hmm. that they can put aside, if they are 20 when they start or 15 when they start, mm -hmm. I mean, they'll be a multi-millionaire yeah. by the time they are 50 and 60 because of just that ability of having time. Mm -hmm. And so I think if, if young people could just see that and understand the value that they have and that time truly is a superpower, they can change their mindset and start to think a little bit differently. Right now, it's like you're in a hurry to grow up and do the things you've always wanted to do mm -hmm. at the age of 20. I think just before we started recording, we we're talking about how these guys want to drive their parents' car at the age of 23, you know? So mm -hmm. it's just to kind of understand life is about times and seasons. Yeah. In your 20s, it's time to try out. It's time to increase your learning ability mm -hmm. because the more that you skill yourself and spend time um, improving your skills and your abilities the more you enable yourself to earn more yeah. and another thing I usually tell young people is don't get complacent yes you earned zero and now you earn 60,000 yeah. and it just seems like so much money yeah. but don't get complacent and think ah, I'm okay at 60,000 I'm fine yeah. but the more you can uh, find ways to you know, get more skills so that you're able to earn more sooner, mm. then the faster you're able to, to actually get there. Mm. Yeah. Just to follow up to what she's saying, uh, when I was in the CEO of Retirement Benefits Authority, uh, one thing we discovered that financial literacy in this country is very low. Mm. Yes. And uh, I took a team to Japan mm. right. to go and study mm. the uh, financial literacy, how does it work there? Mm. I think one of them was Dr. Yes. Massey. Dr. Massey, yes. Yeah, that's part of the team. She, she joined I, us yes, yeah, in the first there. round table, yes. And what came out of that study, which I think she must have said, that uh, they start teaching it at grade six. Mm. So at grade six, which is standard six, mm. somebody taught about banking, mm. about pensions, mm. about uh, retirement. Wow. Wow. At a very early age, mm. they are taught about insurance. So they, are, they, they start at financial sector entirely, mm. they're already being put into that space yeah. of knowing the banking, yeah. pensions, what. So that by the time they grow, they know what stocks are, mm. shares are, they're able, and uh, given the technology today, mm. they can invest in shares directly. They can invest in bonds themselves. You no, know, before you could not invest in bonds as an individual. Mm. But now you can just yeah. go to the system and you go central bank or something. Mm. So they are able to, in fact, we have a young people we have now, 
if they have this information. They'll be able to, to do it. I, I lecture at the University of Nairobi and you find that even people I lecture in different disciplines don't know anything about banking unless they're in yes. finance. Mm. But that has changed uh, of late what the university is doing that every discipline as a core subject must do entrepreneurship. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I lecture entrepreneurship. So I lecture students doing engineering. Mm. So we have entrepreneurship for engineers. Mm. So we're going to have entrepreneurship for doctors. Mm. So the basics mm. of business. Because once they leave, they don't have to go and work in a place. They need that knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense now having people in different disciplines getting into this field. Mm -hmm. So if we can get our students at grade six, and that was going to be included in the curriculum, mm -hmm. if you talk to Dr. Massey, so that uh, when you're in class, it's not a special subject. Mm -hmm. That's what we discovered. Yeah. When they're teaching you English, they say, okay, English bank is included there. Stock is included in the language. So you're being told what it is. So it's part of the normal class, not special class. The way you normally say, have a special class for commerce. No. It's part of the normal yeah. trading. When you're being taught mathematics, this is a bank. If you go, you know, the usual things that yeah. you're So integrating it into everything. Yeah, it's integrated in, in the subjects yeah. completely. Yeah. So that these are things that they learn as they go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's part of the training. And if you start the grade six, by the time they reach it's at eight, they already start saving. Yeah. And it's easy to save somebody else's money than your own money. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. If somebody <laughs> gives you money, it's easy to save yeah. than your own money. Your own, yeah. Yes. But it's better that if you start early, and then the, if you start at that age, you can see the usefulness of multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. As you say, time. Yeah. Because you, you, you put that money there, you forget. Yeah. And wait to be given. Yeah. But with time, you see it growing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't save, then you have nothing. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is to encourage them to start saving early. So that by the time they reach, and you know with time, they would have made so much money. Mm -hmm. And that they, they know the importance of cash mm -hmm. and the benefits of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me just make a, oh, sorry, go ahead. You wanted to uh, say something? Yes. I, I, I wanted to actually, when you said, uh, when you're young, like thinking back to my 20s as well, what I wanted to do was make it and make it and make it. And when making it, I thought was the more I earned, the more I expanded the, um, how much I was spending. As you know, I, I, just, I just grew my expenditure with a bigger paycheck that came in. But then, at some point, I realized, and, and um, I can't remember how I, I, I got to see this. If, the, the, if one has an advantage, and right now the young people get a lot of um, either quick money, sometimes they do gigs and they, they're paid, and that advantage when you get when you're young, you're young. What I'm hearing from what you're saying, Rina, is being time being the superpower, in the multiplier of income, time and discipline, is that when you take that money when you're young and put it in at that early age, whatever age that is, you then ride the advantage you have from a young age. So that you're riding it in a way that it's more, the superpower now starts to work from the beginning so that you're not having to lose that advantage you have because the money has come to you mm -hmm. sooner whether it's come to you at age 10 or at age 18 or at age 22 or 29 whatever period that is because you started early that's what allows you to actually get the the driveway or the runway that helps you build on and so that if anyone else comes later at that point as well, at the time when they get it, if they start immediately, then they get that advantage that they're going with. And that I, I have seen is actually the advantage that worked for me. When I stopped now, um, going more from a spending perspective, you know, like I'm spending, 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 then I realized, can I take advantage of the money that's coming early? Then it puts me still ahead, as in I, I still remain ahead and continue to build on it and continue to ride it using the different investment aspects. So at least from a personal perspective, I can confirm that that's, that approach did work. Yeah. Mm. I think maybe I, I want to address those who may be listening and wondering, okay, so now you're talking about saving. I don't even have an income. Yeah. Amazing conversations we're having here. More to come and we'll go deep into them. So see you on the 27th of April at the, the Financial, Financial Literacy, Literacy Summit. Summit.